The views expressed are solely those of the individuals providing them, and do not reflect the opinions of the Team Sakpase podcast or their respective affiliates or sponsors. This episode is sponsored by LS Cream, the perfect blend of spices and tradition inspired by Haitian cremas. Please drink responsibly. Sock Passe. What's up, world? Welcome to another episode of the Team Sock Passe podcast. My name is Glad. And I'm your boy, Rob. We are your favorite Team Sock Passe podcast show where we interview great entrepreneurs from all sectors of industry. Remember, subscribe, share, comment below. Subscribe and you share and you comment always below. Glad, what's up? Oh, we got a powerful interview for you guys today. We're with a guy who's about to change lives. Well, mm. he's already changing lives, but if you're watching him for the first time, he's about to change your life. You just got to tune in and listen in and tap in. We met this brother a couple months ago at a dope event, which we're going to talk about. Our brother Charles Noonan from the Lamb Bang team. What's up, my brother? Hey, what's yes, up? What's sir. up? Yes, sir. Friday night. Whatever. <laughs> no doubt. How you, How you feeling? How you feeling, man? I'm good, man. New York City. Um, mm. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, Got to throw the Bronx in there, the boroughs. Or the BX all no day. Doubt. Yes, yeah. sir. No doubt, man. We, yeah. we, we, uh, we were fortunate enough to meet you at Sheeta 3's event. Shout out to Sheeta 3. Sheeta 3. Um, the Play for Play event, um, mm-hmm. which you are the champion, by the way. We want to shout oh, that out. Shout out to <laughs> he got the chip. Um, you had about <laughs> maybe that. about 100 a, a people up in there rapping the Land Bank team. Yeah, yeah man. You um, did, did have a powerful team, bro. Yeah, we got we got loyalists, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you got some day ones. The <laughs> Land Bank team is powerful, man. It's, it's, it, this is what it is, though. When you're able to change lives like that, mm. people feel, even though it's just information that you have, right? It's intellectual property. People feel forever indebted to you because not only did you change their life, you changed generations behind them. Mm. So they're, po- they're, they're forever thankful, grateful. And when I need them to come out, they come out. Mm. That's what's, yo, know, the information you were putting on that stage, bro, was just amazing. Like, Rob was standing next to me and his eyes were like this when you were on stage. <laughs> yeah, and my yeah. eyes were like this too. Like, yo, we got to get this dude on. Um, Land Bank. I mean, honestly, this is the first time. I don't know if you heard it before, Rob. Yeah, but this is the well, first I've, time. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of Land as far uh, as, I mean, not Land, but Land I've heard Bank. of the whole Land Bank, Land Bank really? thing. But when you kind of explained it, that's when I was like, okay, I get it now. Yeah, man. So, so explain, yeah, explain yeah, please for explain it for those people who don't know what land bank is, and that's what we're talking about today. All right, cool. So land banks are government entities that partner with communities that have issues with problem properties. Problem properties are typically defined as vacant and abandoned properties, dilapidated properties. So a land bank will go into a community and they will create a, a deal with that community and saying, hey, let us sell these properties pennies on the dollar as low as we possibly can the exchange is it's going to impact the community it's going to uplift the community and it's going to put the property back on the tax roll so it's important for that community that county now they get like this win-win situation so there are 250 land banks spread out throughout the course of the united states and they're typically in those areas that need help the most got you is there a company that owns land bank like who owns the term land bank. So here's something that I don't <laughs> tell people. I actually, I'm tr- I'm in the middle of trademarking the name land bank. Wow. <laughs> right. However, okay. I'm just a developer okay. who decided to make that my niche. Um, that I, am I, to my best understanding, they're governed by the center for community progress, which they're known for turning like vacant properties into vibrant ones throughout the country Mm -hmm. in areas where land banks may not even be. They have things like um, vacant to vacant to vibrant programs where they'll go into communities and just start those efforts on their own. And the reason that these organizations exist is because from a statistical uh, statistical standpoint, we're noticing that areas that have vacant properties they're using those properties for crime for reasons of crime 
right? They're, they're unsafe, they're dangerous, they're often used as trap houses. Mm. They're used as like um, places for individuals that are suffering with, of, with homelessness. They're being places where people can use drugs, animals are being there. And it just seems like from a systematic, systematic standpoint, where, where there's a lot of vacant properties, there's a lot of crime. Right. So they create these organizations to help stop the vacant property issue. So if you, if you stop that issue, right, and all mm -hmm. the houses are occupied by individuals that own them or invest in them, we can kind of eliminate some of the problems that those uh, vacant properties bring to the communities. So these vacant properties, so, because, I mean, we, you know, growing up in Brooklyn, we've seen, you know, abandoned homes. Yep. I mean, to this day, you still see them or whatever. Um, not as much. Not, not as, as much. Yeah, not <laughs> as much. If you see one, let me know. Yeah, hey, we need as, to buy you know, it. I'm telling yeah, you right I mean, now. they probably, they got dibs on it already. Exactly. But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But now, going through these properties, I mean, they're always going to be in the hood, supposedly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But then... My whole thing is I'm trying to understand this whole land bank. Like, how does it fall into you buying? Like, how do you find information on that? How do you get to that point where it's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to know the value of this. I, I want to, I'm going to put some money into it. But then around me, it's not really all that great. So here's where I started to invest in land bank properties. When you think about New York City and the value of, let's just say, Brooklyn, mm -hmm. right? For example, when you think about the value of Brooklyn today versus 15 years ago, you guys been in Brooklyn more than 15 years? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you think about the value of Brooklyn today and 15 years ago, would you safely say it's doubled? Yeah. Uh, it's probably more. Probably more, right? <laughs> yeah, I like more. to go conservative, Absolutely. but yeah. it's doubled. For sure. Mm -hmm. We owned a lot of the brownstones, right? We owned a lot of the properties here before, let's just say it got gentrified. We, we lived here, it was our neighborhoods. And we allowed other people to come in, move us out, and then they just placed this value on properties that were ours, once ours in our neighborhoods, and now they're all of a sudden doubled. So my concept in land bank properties is, if we just start to own neighborhoods again and own mm -hmm. blocks of properties again, and we put that same value on those properties, now the value is still going to be the doubled because we're saying it instead of them saying it, right? So it's sort of like we can gentrify and we could put our own sticker price on our own properties as opposed to waiting until they do a Whole Foods, a yoga studio, and then put doggy parks, and now it's gentrified, and all of a sudden the sticker goes up. So my concept was, so I bought in Brooklyn very early, right? Yes. I saw it coming. I bought in Brooklyn early, but you what bought, got me- You bought in Brooklyn? Yeah, you yeah, bought, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a Bronx guy bought in Brooklyn. Bought in wow, Brooklyn. How, long, how long ago? 10 years ago. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah. that was perfect timing, bro. Perfect and, timing, and but I a, always- A brownstone? Yeah, okay. I always wanted to live in a brownstone. It's right off of Flatbush Avenue, not far from Prospect Park, where we were just talking about. Right. Mm. Peppers is my restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So okay. shout out to Peppers. They got the best jerk chicken. No, they do. They do. They do, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fact. All right. So it ain't no promo. It's just a yeah, fact. Yeah, Some yeah. stuff is just a fact. Yeah. <laughs> just a fact. That's just a fact, man. Peppers yeah. got the best jerk chicken. But anyway, man, so I just came up with my own concept of, it's two, two parts that got me into land bank properties. One, my, my two kids, my sons, right? So as the prices, the value of the property started to increase and my sons started to get older, I really started to think about where are they gonna live when they come home from college? What mm. are they gonna do? They can't afford a $2 million home. Mm. So, and, and, and I'm pretty hard because my upbringing was hard. I come from humble beginnings. And it was more like, hey, go get it. You better do this. These mm -hmm. three steps, right? Mm -hmm. So that you can make it out here when you get on your own. Mm -hmm. So at first I was like that with my sons. And then I was saying, this generation can't be like that. As parents, we don't have to enable them, but we got to set them up to win. If price, house, house prices are $2 million, 1.5, 1.8, depending on where you go in Brooklyn, 
and, and we don't get them a head start, mm -hmm. they're gonna st get they're gonna start off behind. Right. It's just mm -hmm. like what it is. If you're not right. setting your kids up through either the education channel, handing mm -hmm. down the business, real estate, if you ain't buying stocks and giving them that portfolio, mm -hmm. or if you don't invest in life insurance and die, then it's gonna be hard for them to just become millionaires like first gen. Mm -hmm. So my concept was let me just invest in real estate anywhere in the country, mm -hmm. right? I did, this is just exactly my thought process. I said, let me just invest anywhere in the country and let me just cash out and buy my son's properties wherever I could find them. So I took Trulia, I flipped it upside down by lowest price, and I was looking to just buy properties, just buy doors, have them cash flow, and over time, just build them a portfolio. Let's just say, for example, I bought five houses each, right? And the rent was $1,000 a month. Anywhere in the country I was willing to go. They would each have at least $5,000 to start every month as far as their portfolio. And then what I found was these $1,000 properties in Detroit. And I was like, all right, this is crazy. Just like everybody else thinks, right? It's crazy to see $1,000 mm -hmm. properties. But you guys luckily have been to the versus battle. Yeah, you see a, yeah, a mob yeah. of people that right, got properties. Right. And you see, I think, what did that girl have? Like six? She yes, was yelling yeah, out? Yeah, yes, yeah. Or nine? Something like that. This The numbers are crazy. So then I started digging into land. I found land bank properties in Detroit. And I started to dig and dig and dig. And the, the negative connotation associated with the land bank was if you start to renovate and you don't finish it, they're going to take your house from you. If you, if you don't do things right, if you don't do it by code, they're gonna take the house back. Cause you have what, two years to fix it up? Every land bank is different. Okay. So in Detroit, it's one year. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they might switch back and forth between six months and one year. Okay. Um, in Macon, Macon County, Georgia, there's no period, there's no renovation period. You're just gonna go buy the property. That's the Macon, Bibb County land bank. Mm -hmm. um, they vary, but what I found was and, and, and my investment strategy was different. My investment strategy was I want to get these properties done. I want to re renovate them right, right? Because now when you're doing something for yourself, it almost could be done whatever kind of way you want. But when you're doing it for your kids and for like generations to it's come. It's got to be set up right. It's got to be yeah. done right. Man. Yeah. Thanks. So when they start saying cutting corners, I'm like, well, I'm not cutting corners. They start saying the land bank's going to look over your shoulder. I'm like, I ain't doing the work anyway. I want some extra eyes on the contractors doing the work anyway. So this was kind of aligning with my mission to build properties. I'm like, all right, so, so you guys think getting permits is bad? You think having somebody look over your work and making sure it's done right and to mm -hmm. code is a bad thing? And they're like, yeah, the contractors, they don't like it. It's bad news. It was perfect for me, for my mission and what I wanted to do. So I started to buy there. I bought like two i got those done really quickly then i ended up getting a block of properties so they actually champion you land banks will champion you they'll work with you they want to see you win they want to have that same impact on communities as you do mm -hmm. but they're, they're leveraging like the fact that they're a government entity mm -hmm. and that they have control over the properties but you actually have to renovate them so they actually don't they're, they're not as bad as what people think they are got you so before we dive deeper into this um let's talk about humble beginnings you had mentioned you know humble beginnings yeah. talking about you, you know your sons and stuff like that how did you even get the funding to get your first properties and before you were doing getting into real estate and land banks what were you doing before that i had a corporate job i was working at american express okay but again humble beginnings in the sense that I grew up poor. Um, I actually showed somebody a picture, man. You know, like way back in the days, you had the coat with the zipper and the zipper broke. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I had a coat with a broken zipper the whole winter. Mm. Like, I had to struggle and fight. And then I showed the picture, and it was kind of like, it was like, like, oh, sideways. yeah, when yeah. you slide it up, <laughs> it goes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, like, real wow. talk, my, my zipper was sideways, and I was like posing in it. <laughs> and the person was like, man, this is so sad, but it's beautiful to see. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm telling you, man, like, humble beginnings, it teaches you, it teaches you how to be creative, mm. right? And when I travel a lot, 
and I go to impoverished or developing countries and things like that just to see how creative they are. And I always come back with like this creative mind mm -hmm. because you see kids having fun with what when you go to other countries, rocks, tires, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, they make a basketball hoop out of anything. A mm -hmm. stick is a bat. Mm -hmm. It's like so creative. So I always travel and that helps me just get into a creative space. But what it did for me, right? I fell in love with sports as a kid because that's all we had right mm -hmm. that's that's sports is like in in underdeveloped communities it's like the one thing you can do for fun that doesn't cost a lot of money mm -hmm. right yeah that's so true that going true. outside and playing was like yeah. my toys and, yeah. I, and i told i tell people all the time i didn't have toys for me to go play it was just go outside mm -hmm. right? right growing up in the bronx it was like go outside so i ended up playing basketball um, fell wildly in love with basketball and ended up getting a scholarship to college. And I, and, and part of my background, I say that's the one thing that saved me being in a different environment. Mm. So I ended up getting a, um, a scholarship to Caldwell University, which is like an affluent part of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And it's a private school. So the, the, outside of the athletes were kids of parents that could just afford forty, fifty thousand dollars educations. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, I'm big on environment. Environment is so powerful. Environment is like the key to everything. If you if you really ask me like how would I like make it from zero to whatever, mm -hmm. it's like just put me in a, in, in an environment right. where they're mm -hmm. where they're thriving, mm -hmm. I'm gonna thrive. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So I started to learn things like credit. I knew nothing like there was no financial literacy in the Bronx growing up. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I learned credit. I learned hard work. I learned integrity, which is something that they don't teach. And like in our communities growing up. So, you know, when they say, like, what would you do if you were broke and how would you start over? Mm -hmm. For me, I would just say put me in an, in an environment where people are thriving. And I'll, and I'll figure it out because mm -hmm. that's how powerful environment is to me. That's how much it, it shaped me, it changed my life. Mm -hmm. So when I went to school, it was like in a more affluent community, right? The kids there, their parents just paid for school, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 tuition. It wasn't an issue. So my friends that were home, like my friends that went to, I would say like city schools in New mm -hmm. York City or the tri-state area, right. They came back with bad credit. When I went to school, those predatory, remember in college they had those like, those credit card companies that would like, try to give you a credit card for a t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A water 100%. bottle. A water bottle. A water all bottle, these, right? All the promo items. <laughs> all the promo items. <laughs> and you would mess up your credit right. for a water bottle right. or a t-shirt, yeah, right? Yeah. So the environment I was in, they knew better, mm. right? They, they, there was financial literacy at an early age which I just got around and I'm like, oh, I could get a credit card. And they're like, nah, bro, you don't got no job. So I'm like, but yeah, um, but I need money. They're like, hey, just do it out for a little while. So I started to learn like, just like financial habits, like good practices. Um, I didn't get those credit cards. And then as I came home from school, mm -hmm. I started to notice the things that I knew and that I learned from being in that environment made me very different from everybody else because that's one of the things early on in our community, when we don't know, I feel like other companies or, or bigger companies, they might, they might um, look to take advantage of us, look to make money off of us. And um, mm -hmm. being in that environment, we were kind of protected from stuff like that. So I learned financial literacy, like my network was crazy coming out of college, right? Mm -hmm. Especially being an athlete, everybody likes the athletes. They're all fans, so to speak. And they, they just have a level of appreciation for you because mm -hmm. you've entertained them for right. four years, right? right. They got mm -hmm. to know you. They feel like this uh, association to you. Mm -hmm. So just that alone, that love for basketball got me a scholarship to that school. And it really just, it was everything to me. It just changed my life. How was it like a freshman walking on campus from the Bronx, kid from the Bronx and just being around? Man. It was tough. I, I missed home, honestly. Okay. I, I would. I didn't understand the concept because it probably was like one of the first times for me being away from home. Mm -hmm. And um, all the athletes were like athletes of color, but everybody else really wasn't. They had some foreign exchange program, mm -hmm. but for the most part, I felt like the basketball team was really all I had at first. Mm -hmm. 
and then you get comfortable over time. It's just, so here's an example of how environment can change you even if you don't want it to, mm -hmm. right? This is how environment can change you. When I went to this school in New Jersey, I did not want to start to listen to the music they was listening to. I didn't want to start talking. You laugh because you know exactly where I'm coming from, right? I didn't want to talk like they were talking. When I got home, right, when I went back to the Bronx, the music I was listening to was, was different. different. right? The yeah. dances I was doing was different. <laughs> the words I was, I was using were different. And it was like, I didn't even want it. You start listening right. to Motley Crue. And I didn't even want to know this stuff. I thought yeah, it was uncool, you, yeah. but that's just the yeah. power of environment. Nah, that's yeah. the power of environment. Nah, right? it's deep. If it's you deep. start hanging out with a different culture, mm -hmm. without you, your willingness, you're going to adapt mm -hmm. that culture and the values of that culture. Mm -hmm. So from there, it was easy for me to, so, so from college, I got into real estate. Um, really early gotcha. and as the as the real estate market went up and down at some point I think it was like oh eight um, I realized like the market is changing the bubbles about to burst because I was just getting loans I was getting properties off my signature it was like no income no asset and you could just run wild with so did estate. you have a so you were saying you're getting property off of your just off of your signature but you had a mentor who was teaching you how to Sign no. off of no going into real estate like no. like I'm just trying to dig deep into your mind back then like what like okay you're a young kid just fresh out yeah. of school why did you choose real estate like why do you choose that path so let me ask you this question did you have a mentor growing up negative no you had a mentor growing <laughs> up no nah. did you have anywhere to get information that would advance you levels ahead no no like this stuff is new concepts to inner city youth. Right, we don't. But you we had don't, that foresight, though. We don't have pe we. I didn't. We didn't grow up with people saying, "Hey, do this, and this right. is how you're going to be successful." Oh, and if you need help, just I'm. I'm here for you. Call me, right? And that's why my mentorship program is lifetime. It's like if you need my help, I'm mm -hmm. here for you. Mm -hmm. not, not, and it's not just for money. Like if you really need help, mm -hmm. I'm here for you. If you need, if you want to excel, like. I think a young lady stood up and said she got nine properties. She's in, in a Detroit. one property yeah, program, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, I know how it was for me getting mm -hmm. in. So my entry to the real estate game, it wasn't, it wasn't rosy and like, like all, all designed by a mentor. It actually came by default where a family member did a real estate deal in my name because I had good credit. Mm. And I didn't really learn about it until tax time. So I had to sign the papers. Then when it was my turn to do the taxes, they're like, yeah, just go in the other room. We'll be done in 10 minutes. <laughs> and I was like, like wow. what's going on here? Wow. And, um, and that's when I dug in and I found um, it's not, the property is 915 Bryant Avenue in the Bronx, right? I looked at the paperwork and Section 8 had paid out $48,000 on that property. So I went back to school. I told my roommate, who's like my best friend to this day, I'm like, bro, we gotta get into real estate. First, they gotta get my name off that property. Mm -hmm. Second, bro, we gotta get into real estate. Like, gotcha. we gotta do what we gotta do to, to get into this game because I, I'm in school. There's no way I could have done anything to make $48,000. The people that did the deal weren't necessarily working anything with the property, but they just knew like you can make money buying houses, renting them out through Section 8, mm -hmm. and you can make passive income. Right. So it was a, b a very bitter taste, a very bitter start, mm -hmm. but it really put that dog in me to say, all right, I'm going to go crazy with mm -hmm. this thing. It put, the, it put like a fire in me to mm -hmm. be like, all right, I'm going to go way past y'all. So mm -hmm. um, that's how I got my start. And I knew the initial concept. But there was no mentor. I didn't know about management companies until Detroit. Mm. So me and my friends were riding around collecting rent on Saturday mornings ourselves. Wow. Like we driving around in all kind of cars and clo fancy clothes and cars going to collect rent, which is something you should never, never do, do, right? <laughs> Definitely <laughs> not. The in first Detroit? Thing, no, 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 oh, in New York. Oh, in New York. No, so my, my, um, 
my portfolio started in the Bronx because I grew up in the Bronx. Right. Okay. So I had a house like 903 Home Street, 915 Bryant Avenue, 917 Bryant Avenue. These are all near Hunts Point. And how old, how old were you? Fresh out of college, 20. So I did five, a five year plan. Right. Okay. It, it took me an sorry. extra year. No, I had same one year, year to same, adjust. Yeah, same year. Same, same thing. Year, the same thing. See, this is the stuff I'm <laughs> yeah. talking about. Like, this is what we go through, right? right this right. is not uncommon. Mm -hmm. um, certain places you say you had to do five years undergrad, they're looking at you like, damn, like, yeah. what, what happened? <laughs> but you know what happened. Yeah. The same thing yeah, happened, pretty much, happened yeah. to me, right? You need that year yeah. to adjust. Gross. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I used to tell people, my major was girls and basketball. Yeah, that's... The first two years. <laughs> and at some point, they're like, yo, you got to start picking it up because, right. you know, you're in school for a reason. Yeah, right? Right. The hotel with books. That's what they That's what book. it was, man. <laughs> at first. At first. They, yeah, they yeah, gave yeah. me a year to, like, get it together. <laughs> so um, I was managing, like, properties like that. Like, I was mm. going to collect rent. And then we didn't know any better. I, I like to tell people we were ahead of the curve. Mm hmm we would chop the house the apartments up into rooms and rent them to as rooms which wow. back then was not like not saying it wasn't legal but there was a lot of work you had to go do to go through to do that right so my start came from just like whatever a 22 23 year old could think of of how to make the most money and scale as fast as possible with his crew got you so mm. you were hungry from, from <clears throat> jump yeah, I came out like going crazy. So let's 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 get into it. Um, you're, you're changing lives online. <clears throat> um, you got a crazy network, crazy team, the land bank team. How does it work? How does somebody get in if somebody's interested in getting to to your team? Well, we do marketing, so um, for the most part, it's Instagram. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm I'm fairly getting into TikTok a little bit. But for the most part, it's like word, it's like the word spreads on Instagram, right? I think sometimes they say bad news spreads pretty fast, but I think good news, good news mm -hmm. and like solid programs mm -hmm. can spread just as fast. So I've only actually been on Instagram a little bit more than a year and a half. And I feel like because of the magnitude of what I'm doing, it's like I'm changing lives, but I really want to change your kids' lives and your kids' kids' lives too. And it's just spread like crazy. Um, people are just buying like one property and they're so inexpensive. And then when you think about the concept of owning property debt free, it kind of aligns with when you think about future generations not creating debt and creating wealth, it just spreads like, like wildfire, man. So people reach out on Instagram Mm -hmm. um, there's a course once, once you join the team, there's a course and you go through the coursework, you learn um, the national land bank map and where they are. Mm -hmm. And then there's just a subset of series of things that you need to do to figure out where you want to invest and what's most comfortable for you. Got you. Now, when you say, yeah. go ahead, Rob. No, I was going to say, like, when you're looking at the map, there's certain areas like when we when we were at the event, mm -hmm. a lot of people, you know, they were focused on Memphis. Yeah. Is that one of your biggest areas? That's one of the that's one of the better land banks because a lot of their properties are close to the downtown area. Mm -hmm. So the Memphis Land Bank, um, they're probably you can get properties like two miles away from uh from where the Grizzlies play. I forgot where it's called Bill Street. Okay. Yeah, so Bill Street, they have properties in that surrounding area. Have you guys ever been to Bill Street? No. No. No, it's like a party street, man. It's gotcha. like one of the, the most lively streets in Memphis. Mm -hmm. So that land bank is popular. Um, people love the Detroit land bank just because Detroit has the ability to appreciate, and in my opinion, more than any other market mm -hmm. because of the influx of cash being invested there, right? I think it's Dan Gilbert who owns 92% yeah, yeah. of the properties. Yeah, Dan Gilbert. Yeah, yeah so, <laughs> man, that guy has a... a He's, he, his portfolio is crazy. It was so at a point deep. where I thought it was fake. Yeah, no. I, I was like, how does how does one man own? <laughs> so he owns ninety two percent of the real estate in the downtown area, right? I rent from him. My office downtown on Woodward Avenue. I rent from him. Wow. Right. He owns Bedrock Construction, so he's building <laughs> his own oh, properties wow. in the downtown area. I did not know. Uh, he owns a, a title company. 
right? So he's closing the properties that he's buying on his own, and um, just a ton of other a ton That's of crazy. other businesses. Man, he's heavy. Yeah, heavy he, in the game. he's definitely heavy. When you say inexpensive to get into land banks, uh, give us give us an idea of somebody who's interested. How much can somebody start to get into purchasing a, um, a land bank property? All right, so I'll give, I'll, I use this example a lot too, man. And I'll give the Detroit Land Bank. And, and part of that and where we met, and you see this force of team members mm-hmm. and like yeah. rooting for me. and they're, Crazy. They're, they're locking Crazy, arms yeah. and yelling and screaming, yeah, right? Yeah. When we, a lot of them buy there because it, you, the auctions there, or the, they have two ways to get an auction and own it now. Those properties start at $1,000. And it used to be a mentorship, but it really st- morphed into like a team membership. It, it, it just morphed into a team where the team members, they go check on each other's properties when they go. So they'll, they will, hey, Rob, I'm going on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Everything good with your property? You want me to check on your windows? You want me to check to see how the siding went? I'll check mm-hmm. it for you, right? Um, there's a warehouse there where team members are able if there's materials left over from a job let's just Mm -hmm. say you're doing a job you're doing a job you have leftover materials we all put them in a warehouse and in that warehouse if i need supplies or anything i could actually go in the warehouse and get the leftover supplies that you guys have so there's a heavy concentration of development in that detroit area because you can get in at a thousand dollars okay there's also which is crazy and I think I talked about this. I'm not sure, but it's so much to give, right? They have a side lot program in Detroit where they will allow you. And guys, if anybody's watching, you guys want to go check this stuff out. You can go to buildingdetroit.org. That's the website that hosts the land bank, uh, Detroit land bank properties. There's a side lot program where if you own a property for $100, you can get um, the side lots that are next to you if they're vacant. So you can get the property in front, on the side, um, the back, and then the diagonal properties. If they're vacant, you can get those too. If not, there's another program called their neighborhood lot program where you can apply for those and those can be purchased at $250. Hmm. So you know, a couple of years ago, I was doing my research in Detroit and I was looking at certain properties. I'm talking about like three family homes for like $5,000 during the pandemic. Yeah. But they were run down. Obviously, you got to put some money into it. But obviously, from I'm in I'm in New York, so I'm going in purchasing an untouched property, unseen property. I don't know the neighborhood. Yeah, is this? Are you you and your team? Are you, you have people over there already that are like? Yeah, of course. Like Detroit base. Yeah, so we try to have team members in most of the cities that where we build. Mm-hmm. So Detroit, we have. Here's something funny. In Detroit, right, we have the, um, man, what do we call this? Squatter protection. Mm. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. I so, think we were talking about this, too, so, at the event. Yeah, yeah so yeah, there's yeah, mostly yeah. women for some weird reason, <laughs> right? Women just invest. They are, mm-hmm. like, the, the ones that invest long term for the most part. Studies mm. show men kind of take taking care of the home they take care of like things in the immediate mm-hmm. and the women tend to invest for long term i could see that it's yeah. just statistically yeah. true mm-hmm. right true. you get like a family of four mm-hmm. the father's caring for like three months out maybe a year out mm-hmm. the mother is really the one who's doing the planning long term mm-hmm. so it's mostly women right and me going back and so my mission as you guys know i'm going to buy properties for my kids right i'm going to buy properties for my kids to cash flow so i'm going out there regardless of whatever whether i know the people there or not like this is just a mission that i have to get done Mm -hmm. so i built these relationships with like good contractors bad contractors the neighborhood tough guys, the, the nice okay. guys. I okay. built relationships. I really like grassroots. Mm-hmm. I would say put it down in Michigan, <clears throat> Delaware. So there's a Wilmington, Delaware land bank as yeah, well. Yeah, okay. Um, Michigan, Wilmington, Muncie, Indiana. Mm-hmm. So we typically have people there. But when I say land bank team membership comes with squatter protection, mm-hmm. if you call me and you tell me you have a squatter, right, and you're on the team, I can make a phone call and get that squatter out of there. Day of. Because of the squatter protection. 
because my people i'll make a phone call and be like hey glad what, what's your address all right i'm gonna call rob rob get this guy out he's on the team mm. um he gotta go and what happens most of the time because vacant there's so many vacant properties mm -hmm. they know like what places they can stay in and what's not and, mm. and and i do it that way because they're local it's easier right so we all have places in brooklyn it's mm -hmm. easier for me to say i know the house around the corner from peppers let's all go over there and talk to this guy and get him out but for a woman that lives in delaware to feel like she has to go do that mm -hmm. is it, it's just more of a daunting task so they typically will call me it doesn't happen often but i just know some wild and crazy people out there man yes. that will just do it. and it's all always been amicable mm -hmm. but the fear is is removed right so you you want to invest there and there's an issue you can just call me in. So 10 out of like 10 a mob. times huh it's like a mob no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> nah you know, man just nah, a, nah. i would say just a a, a connected and well -respected, well respected individual gotcha and after a while they kind of see like hey this guy is here to help our neighborhood he's mm -hmm. impacting the neighborhood and when mm -hmm. you got like so many people just like in brooklyn when brooklyn is changing we see it we're mm -hmm. like damn there's, there's a new a new house being built this brownstone's being built, Miss Betty moved, right? And you mm -hmm. you feel it. Mm -hmm. So they know, and then when they know it's somebody that looks like them, sounds like them, and it's just like them, they respect it. Gotcha. And then individuals on the in the community, they have a certain level of appreciation for you as well. Even though they call me like this fast talking New Yorker <laughs> um, who's pushy, right? Because I want my stuff done. Right. They they have a certain level of respect because they know long term it's for the better of their community. Got you. You got to give us an experience, a, a squatter experience that you've uh, had to, you know, take care of. So I haven't had in mind, however, there's a, uh, a married couple named the Property Wives. They called me and they had a squatter in their property. Mm -hmm. I used this guy. Um, we fought, right? We just never got along because he can like, construction being a carpenter wasn't necessarily his strong point mm -hmm. but he took work on for me and he tried mm -hmm. so we fought and fought just like over the years right we just was at each other but we understood each other mm -hmm. right he's mm -hmm. trying but he's not that good at mm -hmm. what he's doing and i'm pushing him because you know my mission right like i need these properties done i need them rented out and i need them cash flowing because the kids are getting older and they can't pay two million dollars to live in brooklyn so I'm not trying to have my kids live in, you know, some rural town far away. I'm like, hey, you know, I want to set them up so that they could live close. So eventually we developed a really close relationship and him being wild and crazy. <laughs> if I have an issue, um, I could just make a phone call. So they were telling me that they had squatters in their property. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, this happened live on a, on a mentorship call. I call the guy on the phone. He's like, they're going to be out out the property today and um he goes over there not only does he get them out the property listen to this one this dude puts them to work puts the puts the <laughs> squatters to work and has them clean their property out wow, wow. that's crazy crazy that's definitely mob like yeah that's 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 what i'm looking at <laughs> it's, <laughs> like, you pull up. <laughs> it's it's also community like no it is because you got to think people uh sometimes they're just looking to take advantage of people mm -hmm. but if we all go over there and we like look bro she's trying to clean this place up she's trying to get it rented out she bought it it's hers it's a sister that looks and sounds just like us we're not gonna let you take advantage of her like that yeah and what happens is like there's there's more than one vacant property i i, I don't know what he told them but it's like hey you could just go st stay down the block but we're not gonna allow you to just disrespect the sister like that and um he got them out and put them to work the same day. Dope. And Dope. I know squatters have their rights. Of, what is it? Two years? Not in no. Detroit. Not in Detroit. No, no, no. There's no. There's very little police in Detroit. If you remember the pandemic, right? Just think of the pandemic. When they tried to shut down Michigan and Detroit, mm -hmm. it didn't happen. They went on the steps. They were marching. They were protesting. Yeah. They didn't shut down. They have their own. So, so here's Detroit. Let's just say eight miles. Mm-hmm. Dan Gilbert owns the first two. The middle of the city is bad. 
that's where it's bad. And then you go a little bit further, seven mile, eight mile, outside of eight miles, Detroit, outside of Detroit, it starts to look better. That pocket is the Wild West. Hmm. It is 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 ungoverned. So the you you have an issue, you handle the issue. You you have to just like play by the rules. So if it's a squatter, they're underdeveloped cities. The water department takes two months to turn water on. Jeez. DTW, which is Detroit, that's Detroit Water. DTE, Detroit Energy, may take two months to and to put your electric on. Meanwhile, in New York, you call in Con Ed and your lights are on. It's in your name tomorrow, right? Mm-hmm. It's just very different. Underdeveloped cities can operate in a different way. That's just done by design. It is done by design. Yeah. And that story is deep in that city. Yeah, I'm man. sure. I'm sure it yeah. is. So, all right. I got $1,000. I get a property. Uh, there's no liens on these properties, right? No. So here's the good thing about, about land banks. Land banks have um, the ability to do what's called quiet title. So land bank properties are the properties, some people say the properties that nobody wanted in, um, in the tax lien and tax deed auction. So they will be passed down. So there's a huge auction that everybody's talking about in Detroit, right? Mm-hmm. It's their tax lien or tax deed auction. Mm-hmm. People don't buy these particular properties because they do the research. There could be liens on them. They do the math on renovations. And let's say the property's only worth 50, 60,000. It may cost 50000 40000 to renovate, so they don't buy them. They fall into the hands of the land bank. The land bank, having the unique power to quiet title, will be able to get rid of liens, water bills, tax bills, um, mortgages that may be left on the property. They erase those. They have the ability to do that for the betterment of the community. Gotcha. So now that $1,000, you're getting it. And this is why I like land banks more than tax deeds and um, liens, because you're getting them free and clear. Mm -hmm. So now all you have to do, and and here's what I teach on my team, if you don't have money to renovate these properties, I don't recommend individuals use mortgages or take out mortgages to do it. I like the debt-free concept where there's no bank attached to the property. Mm -hmm. That way we'll never lose it as long as we pay taxes and insurance. We got friends in the credit game, the business credit space, Mm -hmm. that can get people $40,000. Right. Got you. right. So the land bank team has partners that will help with funding, business credit, um, creating the LLC, building out the business structure as far as the address, the website, the phone number, mm-hmm. matching the address with Secretary of State. Right. Um, and I'll, I mean, I'll say some names, but <laughs> like land bank team members, land bank team partnerships, we use, we get help from Sheeta Three, mm-hmm. um, Princess Dior. Miss cash flows. A lot of individuals that are like powerhouses in the credit space will come in and help, and they've built out sh- corporate structures and gotten people interest-free loans to renovate on their properties. Because once wow. you get the property, now you got to maintain the property, correct? Like you just said, you want to renovate it and rent it out. So rent now, it out right. now you can cash flow it. And if we're gotcha. talking about thirty thousand dollars, if you renovate a property and you're charging, let's just say fourteen hundred dollars rent, your first rent security, you're getting back twenty eight hundred dollars. Gotcha. But it goes a little bit deeper because now we're getting into program-based housing. Mm-hmm. Program-based housing, and I can't help myself, man. I just got to give some time. I just <laughs> yeah, have to give, right? right? We had educated. So program-based housing, this website called findhelp.org. Mm-hmm. Findhelp.org will give you the programs that are in neighborhoods that are in need of housing. So we have programs that will pay fifteen to $2,000 per room for properties and these are programs that may need housing for veterans um displaced mothers displaced families overcrowded shelters you got safe houses which are like a new term for battered women's shelters or domestic violence places and um when you think about putting buying a house for a thousand dollars and maybe spending thirty thousand dollars you could potentially make that thirty thousand dollars back in the in your first year powerful yeah mm. that's powerful how that's big is your how big is your network right now the land bank team it varies and it's it's kind of hard to calculate because some people want one house some people want three five on any given tuesday our meeting is, can go up to 150 people in the network and we teach a mighty network 
and one of the things, one of the reasons I teach in Mighty Network is to give back. As a developer, Mighty Network has the gives me the ability to stream mm -hmm. wherever I am, and I can stream directly to my audience. So when I go to meetings with my project manager, I really want to show everybody what these meetings are and what these people are telling developers like us in these meetings. When I go to meetings with septic tank companies, it allows me to stream. So from a network size, I know we're over um, 400 families that have joined so far, but that are still in the network that are active. I have to say somewhere around two or 300. Mm. That's what's up. Yeah. Wow. So we, we, go ahead, Ron. No, I was gonna say like, so how many times, well, you guys meet every week yeah, right? and you just basically most of your network, you've, most of the people that you've met are on Instagram or just by yeah. word of mouth. And no, for the most part, it's <coughs> Instagram. It's Instagram part. and people sharing the information. So <clears throat> I got like families in there, like uncles, cousins, mm. they'll get everybody in. And it's not so much recruitment, it's more so like, we need this as part of our family structure. We need this information. We need this concept. Mm -hmm. And we need more so like debt-free properties in our community. And I tell people that too because our upbringing, when we make it, we start to get looked at different, mm -hmm. right? If you got eight houses and you start coming around the block with glad, glad has none, that relationship has the potential to change, mm -hmm. right? They, it, it just gets different. Right, you're making now twelve thousand dollars a month. He's still <coughs> working at the job. Mm -hmm. It starts to change naturally. It's just going to change. So I teach people, right, and that's something that I'm big on. Is like if you can bring your circle with you, bring them with you. So you're in. Yes, I'm gonna get you a house, but yo, what about Glad, man? Like, see if he wants one too, and bring them with you because now what happens is you start to uplift the community. Mm -hmm. You start to keep those friendships. Cause I don't, I don't like the concept that you gotta like lose your circle. You mm -hmm. gotta leave your circle behind. Right. I don't, I don't know if I subscribe to that belief as much as everybody else does. I right. feel like with the information that we have, if I'm telling you I made $12,000 off of buying this property and renting it out, and I want you to do it too. And this guy, I'm in court, I'm in class with him every Tuesday and it's like 300 of us. Mm -hmm. I, I think you might feel more comfortable coming along and doing right. it. Right, absolutely. absolutely. So I tell people like, bring your circle with you, write down the number of properties you want, tell your parents, tell your friends, tell your family. So we don't start to have that divide because yeah. it happens in our community, man. When, when one of us grow, it's cool at first, but when they really start to grow and detach, it, it just does something to that relationship, it's regardless like, of how crab, long it takes. That crab in a barrel mentality. Yeah, it's yeah. that crab in a barrel. But I've seen friendships break up because somebody made it. Like my, t mm -hmm. and even in corporate America, my time in corporate America, I brought my friends with me. I went, it was kind of easy. I kicked, I kicked butt mm -hmm. and I'm like, look, I got a, a friend that I could train to be just as good as me. Mm -hmm. I need you to hire this guy. And I got friends that are the VPs to this day. Nice. Wow. Yeah. So with the information that you provided us with today, right? What's the difference between somebody just taking this information from this episode and going on their own to get their own land bank property versus them getting down with your team and you educating them and, and working with them directly? It's more so, so here's what, here's what the land bank team provides and this is something that it's invaluable. And, and I've seen this over my time teaching. Mm -hmm. You are buying my mistakes. You're joining and you're paying for, you're signing up to learn all the mistakes I made, right? If you don't, you might go put brand new windows in a house and leave those nice, pretty, <laughs> energy efficient stickers on that tell you it's double pane. These are the most expensive. Right. Then what you think gonna happen? They're gonna take. The <laughs> They're gonna take those windows, right? Do True. you have anybody to call? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> you might even cash out and buy them with a debit card, right? Mm. And and you can't call Chase, and, and there's no purchase protection on that. So I'm gonna teach you how to how to do this these things the right way. I'm gonna teach you how you don't get your furnace stolen, 
how you don't get your windows sto window stolen because mine got stolen, right? I'm gonna teach you how to operate in this land bank space safely. I'm gonna teach you how to pay for things one time. Contractors have like a habit of taking advantage of out of towners. Mm -hmm. They know your property better than you do because they're in there more. They're talking to you, you in Brooklyn. They're talking to you, you at work. They mm -hmm. know when to go in your house and when not to. Right. They can call and check in and be like, yeah, he's at work. He just started his meeting. Mm -hmm. I know he's not, he's not gonna be here. There's no cameras on the property. I'm gonna teach you everything that you should and shouldn't do. Mm. Most importantly, and this is what I feel, what I'm learning, that the value that I bring is allowing people to use my confidence. So I did it to the tune of 34 properties, right? I tell people and I show people more than they believe in themselves that you could do it too. So and you join, you're doing it by yourself. You don't know anybody. You don't know the neighborhood. You don't know anything about it. It's so hard for you to do it by yourself. But when you join the land bank team, mm -hmm. you see what that team is like, bro. True. Nah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Crazy, bro. it's nah, crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So you need for help. Sure. You think you can't ask somebody on the team with that shirt on for <laughs> help? Mm. Of course they're gonna of help course, you. Of course, of course. They doing. We're doing it together. Right. Then I'm gonna give you the confidence to say, "Hey, you can do it." So go do it, and I charge them with the task of doing it. So my program, we don't. I don't allow window shoppers. You cannot come in my program and not be successful. If you join the land bank team, I'm gonna check you on Tuesday, right? I do it, I spot check, right? So every Tuesday, nine o'clock, we meet. Um, I don't care about your job. I don't care about where you gotta go. I don't care you on the West Coast or the East Coast at six o'clock. They up, they at it, active. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Every two, I've never missed a Tuesday. I've been in Ghana, I'm on my call 9 a.m. The UK, I'm on my call 9 a.m. Wow. Amalfi Coast, I'm on my call. Like, I, that's that's like my thing. Like, I enjoy teaching and mm -hmm. impacting. Okay. And it, it's crazy because every week, every day, I could check the network and I'm seeing people that are purchasing houses every day. Somebody's buying a house somewhere in the country. Mm. Nice. Powerful. Yeah. Um, powerful. You started off this episode with your sons. Are you teaching your How, how old are your sons now? 22 and 17. Oh, okay. So they are they oh, in the game? Are they part of the team? What are you What are you teaching them? Talk to me. Are they being hard headed? <laughs> <laughs> they being hard headed. Okay. They being hard. -headed? The younger one, not so much. The okay, older okay. one is like, he's trying not to, mm -hmm. as long as he can. Mm -hmm. He's in the game. He's learning, but he's more so enjoying the fruits of the labor and kind of finding his own identity. Mm -hmm. Right, he he's doing what he does. They play basketball. They're scholarship athletes. The younger one's about to go to college, okay. but the older one is. Okay. No. Um, the younger one be he's around it. Like if I have to go speak somewhere, he'll come. Okay. Um, he they they know what their they know what size portfolios they have, and I didn't really know this as much as I thought I did, because a friend of mine asked with the younger one something. He was like, hey, man, I own 60 acres. I don't really, you know, he's like, I don't really care about um, the car that I drive. He's like, I own 60 acres of land that's being <laughs> developed. Like, I could just, you know, like, that's not really my thing like that. And I was like, so you just gonna like acres. lay on that? You know, you gonna do any work? And he's like, yeah, I'm gonna do some work. So I'm like, how you know how much it is? He's like, I count it. Wow. So, okay. okay. Yeah, they, <laughs> they so, so, so yes, but really what I, what I want them to do, like from a personal perspective, I want my kids to get wealth from multitude, multitude of ways, right? Mm -hmm. I want them to get wealth through education. Mm -hmm. So from an educational standpoint, like I've always learned at the highest level of education is where like wealth is. So there's like feeder system schools to the, be the best companies, the best corporations in the country, mm -hmm. right? So I take that educational approach and I'm big on education with them. So I try to s send them to the best schools regardless of cost because it's something that changed my life, right? So I push them down that road for um, the network, for the education and to kind of like go work, go dominate, go learn at the best companies in the country, in mm. the world, right? Because they recruit from the best schools. Yeah. True. 
Um, so from a wealth perspective, from a real estate perspective, right, I kind of have that under control. So I really don't push them down that avenue just yet. It's more like there's a number of ways to be wealthy. Education is one of them, so I push them that way. Real estate is another way, so I push them that way. And then through handing down a business, but mm -hmm. the business route I don't love because you almost give them something that they may not be as passionate yeah, they about. They definitely mm -hmm. won't be, yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I really stress the, the educational forum uh, for them. They'll okay. get into it. Um, we develop a lot right now, mm -hmm. so it is work, right? Dealing with project managers, contractors, and things like that. So I don't think they're so happy to jump in. <laughs> they really just count, right? Okay, they just okay. count. But from an education perspective, nice. I'm more so just go be a beast yeah. in whatever your field is. Absolutely. Yeah. Dope, absolutely. Man. Yeah. Um, yeah. Speaking of education, let the people know about the different programs that you have to offer on, on your site. Oh, cool. So um, we have like a one house program, right? The one house program we call our uh, silver program, right? That's where we're going to handhold you through buying one house. You get in the program, you take the course, you learn everything. And I handhold you through one house. We get you also a uh, success coach. So that's one of the things that helped me too, right? And it's weird how as we get older and the things that formed us, start to show as uh we get we mature and mm -hmm. uh things like that so i had a success coach which is a tutor <laughs> right <Okay. laughs> we get you get tutors in school to help you right. so i built my program like that for those that just need like an extra push or so extra support mm -hmm. so with every program you get a success coach who's going to kind of keep you honest and accountable um then we have our that's our let's just say silver program then we have our gold program because I have blocks of properties, um, the land bank will give you and award you blocks of properties based on how well you do with your one house. Mm -hmm. So then we have our gold program, um, which I help with the offer, the proposal that has to be written, and I help individuals do the budget as well okay. so that they can submit to different land banks to get bundles of properties. Wow. Nice. Then we have our platinum package which is the done for you program. The done for you program is for busy for busy professionals for the most part, or is for the individual that's scared. Mm. So what we're gonna do in that done for you program, we're gonna do the research, we're gonna do the homework, we're gonna buy the property for you. It comes with a property. We're gonna buy that property for you. And now you're still with the group and you have the rest of the team to kind of like help you renovate it and cash flow it. And I'm assuming that's the most expensive program. Yeah. Because you're doing the most work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We doing everything, but it's done for you. You can yeah. sit back and watch. And just watch. Got you. You can go back to work if you want to. We have a lot of, um, I would say, what we call like busy professionals in that program. Got okay. you. So your lawyers will jump in that program. Your doctors, your truck gotcha. drivers will jump in the program because they're busy. Um, we got school teachers in that program. And it's just nice. because they may not have the time, the time right. to do everything. So That's the smart. done for you program will do it for smart. you. So, Very smart. Yeah. Um, any share with us like a success story from one of your students before you get out of here. Let me see. They happen so often. I have to highlight this, this here. I highlight one that's pretty common. There's an individual who, and I always use this one, but this one just, it, it sticks out the most to me. There's an individual who joined the program and within three months, she acquired six properties. Hmm. In three months? In three months, yeah. And How we gave her- How much money did she put in? We gave her the Accelerated Investor Award. Okay. So uh, we do, we, we're, that was our first award. Like I had to recognize her for that. Mm -hmm. She just gangbusters went crazy. Um, so she got the Accelerated Investor Award. How much did she put in? I don't know exactly. Okay. But they none of the properties are more than like three thousand dollars. Okay. So let's just say wow. at most eighteen thousand dollars for six properties. Mm. But then then she need more money to renovate these properties as well. Yeah. Okay. So she 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 work she owns a company. Okay. And that industry is starting to go to starting to tank. Okay. So she knows the value of real estate, and she just is she's investing heavy into real estate. And it's working out well for her. Nice. She's actually in that um, program-based housing program. So you got to think if she has six 
three um three bedroom houses right she's got a ton of she's got 18 18 rooms that she could rent out mm -hmm. possibly for two thousand dollars a month wow killing it killing it so but she's developing them now she's renovating them now and gotcha. developing. so okay. she's okay. not there yet but that's just a, an individual who came to me um i actually met her at an auction she was a part of another program and then she's <laughs> seen like 15 of us and she's right. like wow tell me about your program so when i told her about it she immediately just fell in love with it and she went in and because of like the support mm -hmm. she just went crazy nice and these yeah. homes are in detroit she's got New ohio York. okay she's got birmingham alabama alabama has a real birmingham has a really nice uh, mm -hmm. um land bank program it's mm -hmm. almost by application first come first serve almost mm -hmm. as long as you fill out a, a solid application you can be given one of those properties she's got ohio um michigan birmingham alabama dope nice yeah dope 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 yo you gotta let people know where they could check you out man powerful information my brother all right so two places that um we're starting to grow a lot man the first is instagram right at charles j noonan on instagram and the second we recently started i want to be like you guys right we yeah. recently started the Land Bank Show podcast. And the Land Bank Show podcast is just this full educational forum where I highlight dope individuals that make money through non traditional methods. So we interview people that like start at boutique luxury realty as their first start, mm -hmm. um, individuals that focus on creating, converting single family homes into two and three family homes. Um, it's a ton of information there. And what I like about the podcast, too, is we started this segment called Free Education Friday, where it's my give back where I could just pour into the community. Mm -hmm. I've already decoded all the information for land banks, and I could just give back. Like, like it's just a nice. segment for me to just give. Powerful. Wow, man. Yeah. That's deep. That's Yo, deep. before you get out of here, we got to do the secret question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which go. one you're going to get, but... Uh, Pick one out the basket. Let's see what you get. It's a personal question. Personal? Oh, damn. <laughs> I got to read it. Y'all read it? You read it. If you could meet the younger you, what would you tell yourself? Ooh. Mm. <laughs> That's a good question. Like my, <laughs> yeah, journey, yeah. my journey is... is, is it, it has been ups and downs, mm -hmm. but I don't know how much I would change it. But if I could meet the younger me, and this is a common answer, but it's actually like something true. I would tell the younger me to do whatever I needed to do to find a mentor. Mm -hmm. And if I couldn't find a mentor, I would even go find somebody who's coming back from where you're trying to go. So it don't even have to be a mentor. Find somebody that bought 10 houses. Find mm. somebody that bought 20. Mm. Get around that person. Stay around that person, right? Because we all know what's going to happen, right? You're going to get some houses. Mm -hmm. 100%. You're going to create some wealth for yourself. Absolutely. By default. You could be a resilient kid, mm -hmm. and you're going to come back with that accent, dancing <laughs> funny. Your hairstyle might change, yep, yep, right? Yep, yeah, and that's it, man. So definitely find somebody coming back from where you're trying to go. Nice, powerful, man. Good stuff. I like, I like that answer though. Now nah, it's powerful, that man. It's deep. right. It's that's right, dope. man. We, we appreciate dope. you for coming on. Of course. Thank God we met you at the Sheet of Three. Shout out Sheet of Three again at the Play for Play yeah, event. Yeah, shout out to Sheet of Three, man. Um, she did her thing. Powerful stuff, man. We hopefully we'll be working together soon. Of course. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, we become students. We you guys are welcome. And become students. We definitely, we definitely want to be. Yeah, it, I think it's time, bro. Like, yeah. yeah. Tuesday definitely. morning, if you want, <laughs> man, I'll send you. I have my assistant send you the link. Hop on a call. Okay. And, and you get to see what it is. You get to learn okay. everything about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we love to do that. Man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Rob, housekeeping items. Housekeeping items. Shout out to our sponsors, LS Cream. Thank you yeah. so much. This is. Yes, sir. This, this is you, smooth. You, smooth, right? It's smooth. It's smooth. It's better than Bailey's. It's ooh, no disrespect to Bailey's because a lot of us grew up on Bailey's. Shots. A lot yeah, of us bro. grew up on Bailey's. Yeah. No disrespect yeah. to Bailey's, yeah. right? No disrespect. Shout out to the sponsor, LS Cream. You're LS, LS Cream. Casper. Oh, 
Mm. Oh, we get some pushback. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah. But nah, shout out to LS Cream, husband yeah. and wife. Like they, Miriam and Stefan, like they doing their thing, man. They out there. Thank you so much. Also, shout out um, another sponsor, Roots of Brooklyn. Thank you so much, guys. Also, um, we got Sweet One Sweet Double, one double O. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm you trying to. remember that. It's like a tongue twister. <laughs> yeah. One Double O. Sweet yeah, One in Double O. Space. In yeah. event space. Um, thank you for that. Also, um, yeah, look out for us on Team Sock Passe, man. And tell the people, oh, you told the people where they could find you. Yeah, man, Instagram, Instagram. Charles J. Noonan. No doubt. And don't forget to tap into our YouTube, Team Sock Passe. Also on Instagram, Team Sock Passe. All right. Till next time, Team Sock Passe. We out. out. LS Cream, the perfect blend of spices and tradition inspired by Haitian cremas. Please drink responsibly. Beep, 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 beep.